What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. Have you ever noticed that in big budget Hollywood productions, the defocus or bokeh on the out of focus visual effects elements just looks more realistic, more cinematic, and just generally better? Well, there's a reason for that. And that's because they're using what we call lens kernels to drive a more organic and controllable defocus effect in their visual effects composites. In this video, I'm going to quickly go through how you can use lens kernels inside of Blender 3D's compositor to create better looking composites, just like the pros in Hollywood. Before we dive in, this video is brought to you by FXSoup, the ultimate pocket visual effects supervisor app. I strongly believe that in modern media, if you're not using at least basic visual effects, you're missing out on massive production value in your projects, and that's one of the reasons we've created this app. FXSoup is available now on Google Play and the Apple Store, so check it out now today and take your visual effects and filmmaking work to the next level. Okay, so to create custom bokeh on any visual effects element or view layer in Blender, you need two main nodes. The bokeh blur node, which applies the blur effect, and a bokeh image node, or lens kernel image, which actually controls the shape and behavior of the lens blur. Start by adding a bokeh blur node and connecting the image or element you want to blur to the image input of that node. Right away, you'll get a basic blur effect that you can increase the strength of using the size value in this node. But let's take it a step further. To really dial in the cinematic look, we need to add a lens kernel, and this is where the magic happens. One simple way to do this is by adding a bokeh image node and connecting its output to the bokeh input of the bokeh blur node. This will make the blur on your element take on the shape of the bokeh image. So what exactly is a bokeh image? It's a representation of the aperture or lens shape that controls how light is scattered in your scene. Think about the soft circular highlights you see in blurred out areas of a photograph or movie. These are the bokeh patterns we're creating with visual effects. The bokeh image node lets you customize the shape with settings like flaps, which controls how many sides the shape has, angle, which rotates the shape, rounding, which softens or sharpens the edges, catadiotropicness, which adds distortion for a more unique and organic shape, and lens shift, which adds asymmetry and chromatic aberration for a little bit extra character. Personally, I think playing with the catadiotropicness and lens shift settings will bring out the most cinematic character to your bokeh. Once you've dialed in your settings, you can further modify the bokeh image by stacking other nodes like blur, color adjustments, or even distortion nodes before connecting it to the bokeh blur node. Now here's the cool part. You don't have to use the bokeh image node to create a lens kernel. You can actually connect any custom lens kernel image to the bokeh input of the bokeh blur node. But what are lens kernel images? These are pre-made or captured textures that mimic real world lens imperfections, like unique aperture shapes or subtle distortions. By using these, you can make your defocused elements look more organic and realistic. For example, you could load in an image of an old lens with hexagonal bokeh or experiment with abstract shapes for more artistic effects. Just plug these images into the bokeh input and watch how the blur transforms into something that feels alive and cinematic. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. Using lens kernels and bokeh images inside of Blender is a simple but powerful way to take your visual effects composites to the next level. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below and I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visual effects and filmmaking content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.